This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. What's up guys, Michael here. Now before we get into it, I want you to stick around till the end of the video because we have some news about our Patreon page and I am excited to share it with you. Today, I want to tell you about an exciting new product, Sart Shades. The only glasses designed to help you watch YouTube videos while filtering out all gestures of bad faith and denials of your brutal existential freedom. Nah, just kidding, but I do want to talk about celebrity endorsements. They're nothing new. Early star fatty Arbuckle was hawking Murad brand cigarettes back in 1905 after all. But we're totally fascinated by a new trend that's taking the celebrity world by storm, endorsing cryptocurrency and NFTs. NFTs or non-fungible tokens are digital deeds to digital assets. Think of it as the deed to a house, but that deed is made of computer code. And instead of a house you can live in, you're now the proud owner of a JPEG. NFTs are purchased almost exclusively with, you guessed it, crypto. And because the crypto market is so new and mostly unregulated, NFTs are ripe for hype, speculation, and fortunes to be gained, or as many experts warn, lost. Side note, if you want to learn more about the NFT market, check out our video on it. And if you can't even carry on a conversation about crypto, we've got a video for you too. Um, but you know, please finish this one first. Please. Lately, it seems like celebrities are actually making fetch happen with NFTs. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Paris Hilton, for instance, has appeared on Jimmy Fallon multiple times to talk about them, initially to school him on the topic, then to compare her Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT artwork with his. We're part of the same, we're part of the same yeah, community. We're yes, both apes. I love it. Uh, here, my, this is my this ape. Is yours and eventually to surprise the audience with NFT art of their very own, which she designed herself. Paris, we have no notes. If you love it so much, I actually am gonna give you the first one. I will, I will be honored. And I wanna give one to everyone in the audience. All of this is treated as if it were normal, as if she were promoting, say, her new book, album, or line of designer YouTube sunglasses. A fortune has even gone so far as to name Hilton one of the 50 most influential people in NFTs. And it's not just Paris and Jimmy. John Stamos bought an NFT profile pic. Reese Witherspoon just optioned IP made from an NFT for a film. And Matt Damon used his 35-year-old career to promote crypto at the Super Bowl. Fortune favors the brave. And of course, there's Larry David who's spending his golden years doing this. Eh, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. So what's the deal? Why are celebrities gaga for NFTs and crypto in general? And what does it say about our fame-hungry society? Let's find out in this Wisecrack edition, Celebrities and NFTs, a match made in hell? But before we dive in, I want to talk about this week's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN's uncrackable encryption and secure protocols help keep your data secure as you click around the internet. There are so many upsides to using a secure VPN like Surfshark. Among them, there's the knowledge that I'm getting the best prices available when I'm shopping online. How? Because if a website doesn't know where in the world I am, they can't inflate their prices based on what country I'm in. And this can result in huge savings especially when shopping for things like airplane tickets. And don't forget the secure file sharing that comes with Surfshark VPN. By encrypting all of your internet traffic, it makes downloads safe and secure, which means nobody at Wisecrack will ever know that I've been saving copies of all the close-up footage ever taken in my face, all while still on the clock. Please do not tell anyone. With just one subscription, all of your favorite devices are covered. We're talking about your laptop, Android, PlayStation and Xbox, Amazon Fire Stick, and beyond. And you'll find options for your favorite apps too, like Firefox and Chrome. So get started today by clicking the link in the description and using the promo code WISECRACK. When you do, you can get Surfshark VPN for 83% off, plus three extra months for free. Go to surfshark.deals slash WISECRACK or hit the link in the description. Protect yourself online and download Surfshark VPN today. And now, back to the show. Celebrity is as old as NFTs are new. Some consider Alexander the Great the first celebrity ever, thanks to his power, riches, and face pretty enough to slap on a coin. 
But celebrity culture as we know it today, as scholar Thomas Mole argues, really got going in the Romantic era, when certain authors started cultivating public personality, something we might now call personal brands. Like Lord Byron, who became famous not just for his dank poems, but also for the way he dressed and the way he behaved, including being a bit of a dirtbag with the ladies. The 19th century brought the emergence of photography, which changed everything. Indeed, Abraham Lincoln personally credited a photographer of a widely circulated image of him as a chief reason he was elected president. While painted portraiture had long been a thing for the rich and famous, photography newly allowed for the mass dissemination of images, often images of humans, especially famous humans. With each subsequent technology that followed, images and then moving images of celebrity became more and more accessible until we wind up with Cristiano Ronaldo setting the record for the most Instagram followers ever. And the more images of celebrities circulated, the bigger and broader celebrity became. And this makes sense. After all, celebrity is all about being visible, being seen. In this sense, celebrities can, cynically, be considered commodities that are consumed, i.e. looked at, by the masses. And as scholar Pramod Nair points out in his book Seeing Stars, there's not really a meaningful difference between, say, a promotional campaign for Diet Coke and a promotional campaign for a living, breathing celebrity. After all, celebrities, he says, are materials to be branded and sold. Fame is a manufactured product, manufactured in and by the mass media for public consumption. A tabloid magazine, for instance, may be its own standalone commodity, but it's predicated on even more commodities, the celebrities being reported on. Because celebrities are essentially commodities themselves, perhaps it's no surprise that they've long been seen as essential to creating and sustaining the demand necessary for the consumer economy. As scholar P. David Marshall puts it, celebrity taught generations how to engage and use consumer culture to make oneself i.e. celebrity and consumerism were a match made in capitalist heaven, which is also known as regular hell. This was happening back in those romantic years when people bought roughly shirts to make themselves look a touch more like Lord Byron, for instance. But that was nothing compared to how the inextricable relationship between celebrity and consumer culture has grown in the years that followed. Magazines from the 1940s reported breathlessly on how stars spend their fortune, showcasing their glamorous homes and enviable spending habits. First Lady Jackie Kennedy's fondness for Chanel suits, among other sleek designs, practically defined 60s fashion. MTV Cribs showed us that the ultimate ideal of a dope-ass house might have its own dedicated lingerie closet, or 35 bathrooms. Basically, it's a version of Monkey See, Monkey Really Wants to Do, but instead of foraging for bananas, we're reaching for new markers of class and taste. I saw Katie Heron wearing army pants and flip-flops, so I bought army pants and flip-flops. And nowhere is the relationship between consumer culture and celebrity more obvious than with celebrity endorsements. So why do celebrity endorsements sell everything from cars to Coors Light so well? Nayer argues that it's because of the phenomenon of transferred celebrity, i.e. the product becomes associated with the qualities of the human celebrity. So let's say it's 2004, you love Britney Spears, and you want everyone to know it, and to also associate you with how cool she is. By buying a pair of the Skechers she recently endorsed in the pages of Teen People, you're trying to imbue yourself with as much of Britney's bubblegum charm as you can even if you don't explicitly realize that's what you're doing. Now, Britney is a celebrity in her own right because she's a hard-working triple threat. But if she's out here selling Skechers, she's imbuing it with clout. And those sweet, sweet kicks are reinforcing that clout right back at her. To paraphrase scholar Richard Dyer, celebrities are both labor, i.e. varying combinations of talent, hotness, work ethic, and luck, and the thing that labor produces, i.e. fame and fortune. So it follows that when people with major fan bases endorse a product, not only does the celebrity get more attention in the public eye, but the product itself will see a boost in profits and prestige. What Babe Ruth did for Cola, or Oprah did for Weight Watchers, or Michael Jordan did for Nike, is something the makers of NFTs are ready to harness for a new century. 
Now, you've seen Justin Bieber somehow make Crocs seem cool, and a water bottle became spiritually rejuvenating because of Jennifer Aniston. But something different happens with crypto and NFTs, which, after all, don't tangibly exist in the real world. Because they're so intangible, these non-fungible tokens are ironically very fungible in terms of what they can potentially signify. When Paris endorses them, they're glamorous. When Spike Lee endorses crypto, it's righteous and bold. When Gwyneth Paltrow does it, you're living that crunchy yet chic holistic lifestyle. Crypto, and by extension NFTs, are the perfect empty vessel upon which to project a celebrity's entire affect. And nowadays, there's an NFT happy celebrity for seemingly every demographic. Even Eric Andre's into it. Who would have thought absurdist comedians even knew about NFTs? But when you're buying an NFT to emulate your favorite celebrity, it's like an even bigger dopamine hit than buying those adorable Spears Skechers. You feel closer to them, and more importantly, more similar to them than ever before. Before, you only had the pleasure of consuming like a celebrity. Now, you have the pleasure of investing like a celebrity. What? Here? High-end! VIP exclusive! That's liable to make you feel richer and more glamorous than, say, drinking a Pepsi at a protest. After all, as Nair says, celebrities embody an abstract desire to achieve, to be recognized, to be wealthy. Poverty-stricken celebrities would be hard to find. Celebrities represent what people aspire to be or to possess. And in a world where financial security is anything but easy to come by, emulating the investment choices of an already wealthy celebrity might not seem like the worst option. Now, we're not grumps. If you want to smell like Mariah Carey or buy car insurance like Shaq, have a ball. But there are issues of accountability at stake when celebrities use their power to change our consumption habits. What was supposed to be a historically significant Tiffany & Co campaign starring Beyonce and Jay-Z got a bit thorny when the 128 karat yellow diamond Beyonce wore turned out to be, for all intents and purposes, a $30 million vintage blood diamond. FYI, Bay and Jay released a statement denouncing the jewelry. Or consider this adorable retro ad of Lucille Ball shilling Chesterfields. So cute. And so cigarettes. And we'll keep our adjective to ourselves about the results of diet pills and flat tummy teas. And maybe that's why the celeb sensation surrounding NFTs feels so uncomfortable. Diet pills might give you the runs, but NFTs are a different beast altogether. At best, they're too new to fully judge as a major investment, and at worst, by many accounts, they're a pyramid scheme. It's worth noting that celebrity Ben McKenzie, aka Ryan from the OC, is getting attention lately for actually dunking on NFTs. Welcome to the off-chain, bitch. But think about it. When you buy one of Paris Hilton's bedazzled Boss Babe hoodies, you have like 100 bucks at stake, which isn't nothing, but it probably isn't all of your rent money. But when she essentially recruits you by way of a talk show to buy an NFT, she's doing something else entirely. See, NFT owners have essentially banked on a speculative asset. If Paris wants to see the value of that asset grow, she needs the general public to flood the NFT market with capital essentially to bolster her major investment. And that's where things get tricky. The allure of feeling like your lifestyle is closer to hers or to any rich and famous persons has the capacity to wreck your finances. And that's what we're seeing unfold with Kim Kardashian's endorsement of Ethereum Max. It's a developing story at the time of this video, but the TLDR is this. Kim uploaded a sponsored Instagram story promoting Ethereum Max right after the company had burned half of their available Bitcoin. That means they put them in an essentially locked crypto wallet where they can't be distributed. That created market scarcity, which drove up the price for people who were eager to buy Ethereum Max after being influenced by Kim's story. She and other famous influencers are currently being sued because Ethereum Max's prices shot up 1300% before totally crashing a month later. The lawsuit alleges that it was a pump and dump scheme. As far as we can tell, the people who bought high watched their big investments basically light on fire in front of their eyes. But in addition to being morally dubious, this whole situation is also just really, really surreal. Think about who Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian are. Famous people who literally invented their celebrity out of nothing. 
or that is, became famous purely by being seen. And here they are endorsing a product that by many estimations is essentially also made up. Is this the most meta thing ever? Maybe. And we think that's best understood through a concept from classical political economy, use value. See, use value, as the name suggests, is a measurement of how an object derives value from its usefulness. This pair of galoshes, great for keeping my feet dry in the rain. This spoon, excellent for shoveling cheese whiz into my mouth. Yeah, I, I eat cheese whiz with a spoon. I'm not a barbarian, I don't, put, I don't put cans in my mouth. Everything that humans consider valuable has a use value, going all the way up to actual people. The use value of Zendaya for breaking your heart on screen. The use value of Doja Cat for writing total bangers and the use value of Serena Williams for changing the game of tennis. When these celebrities endorse things, there are two use values at play. That of the celebrity, i.e. their fame and respect of talents, and that of the product, say the beautifying effects of mascara or the refreshment of some frost arctic blitz. But for celebs like Paris and Kim, their fame is a purely ephemeral commodity with no obvious use value. Their celebrity isn't linked to tangible talents beyond, you know, sharing really innovative thoughts on work ethic. Get your ass up and work. And this is where things get even more meta. Marxist economics talks about what happens when a commodity's value becomes detached from the actual thing that can be bought, sold, or traded. Like when a pair of Nikes becomes less about helping you avoid ankle sprains and more about what it represents, the fearlessness of Serena Williams. In this way, the commodity essentially becomes a theological entity, something that transcends use value. It's now a spiritual thing with what one German economist called metaphysical subtleties and theological niceties. So we have two things. One, celebrities without use value or celebrities that have been constructed out of thin air using their clout to push two NFTs which have a use value that's arguably also constructed out of thin air. The whole thing starts to feel like a digital house of cards. If celebrities who have value simply for having value are now pushing digital commodities that also have value simply for having value, it seems like maybe we're all just emperors without any clothes. But what do you guys think? If it brings someone actual joy to feel like they are a player in the marketplace on par with Paul Trail or Eric Andre, is there really any harm in it? Should we just let people enjoy things and say a little prayer that it doesn't lead to their financial ruin? And if it does, should celebrities feel bad about that or even be held accountable? Let us know in the comments. Okay, I said at the top, I wanted to tell you about our new Patreon page, and now I'm gonna do that. Um, we've recently updated our Patreon. We added new levels, new perks, and new exclusive content. I think that you will all like it a lot. Um, so let's say you wanna know more about how we make our videos, what goes into the research and the writing. We got you. We're starting a new uh, series on the Patreon page where we're gonna interview writers and editors and researchers who all make these videos and get a more in-depth picture of what goes into them, um, their research, the ideas, what gets left on the cutting room floor, all that stuff. Now, if you ever watch the videos and want more in-depth discussion of some of the philosophy we talk about, I got you there. I'm gonna start doing a regular series of sort of philosophy office hours where I'm gonna dig deeper into a lot of the stuff we talk about on the channel and a lot of the philosophy and concepts that go into the videos. I'll get into that. I'm also gonna create space for question and answer stuff so you can just ask me stuff and I could try to answer it all without having to take on any more student loan debt, so yay. Um, but that's all on our Patreon page now. Please check it out. And if you're already one of our patrons, first, thank you. Second, check it out as well. Uh, there might be some new stuff that you don't know about that you'll be excited to see. As always, thanks for watching. Later.